Hi everyone and welcome back to Advanced Higher Biology. Uh, today we are continuing with Key Area 1, Lab Techniques for Biologists, and we're moving on to Part B, which involves liquids and solutions. Um, again, this is going to be a sort of theoretical overview of how we handle liquids and solutions in the lab, some equipment you have to deal with, uh, how to work them, any potential issues you may have, but it's really important you have some time in class to actually work with uh, this equipment or make these solutions so you can kind of figure that out for yourself also. So first of all, just talk about dilution. So we often need to dilute substances. Uh, by doing that, we're changing their concentration. Now there's two main types of dilution that we're going to talk about and uh, there's a potential pitfall with one of them. First of all, we have linear dilutions and these are just a range of dilutions where each of your dilutions differ by an equal interval. So your concentration might be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. So the equal interval is the, the key part of a linear dilution. The other dilution we have, though, is a log dilution. And this time, each of these dilutions that you still have in the range are getting more diluted, but this time it's by a constant proportion. So for example, 10 to minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. And that's going to have a slightly different issue when we look at this later on. So again, hopefully you get some hands-on experience of working with these dilutions and how to set these up. But essentially, when you're working with a linear dilution, you have a stock solution that you're then planning on diluting further along your range. I remember that's your, your uh, equal intervals each time. Because you are making each one individually, what that means is that if you do make some sort of measurement error, in uh, one of your dilutions, it's only going to affect that one concentration, that one dilution that you've created, because each of these are done individually. One mistake hopefully only happens once, and it's just going to affect that one concentration. However, in log dilutions, it's slightly different. Because we are diluting these proportionally, that it means each dilution that you create will then act as the stock for each dilution afterwards. So for example, if you make an issue, if you make a measurement problem or error in one dilution, that dilution is now the stock for the subsequent dilutions. Because that dilution is now incorrect, there's been some sort of error, then that error is going to be compounded in all of your subsequent dilutions. And that's why you need to be so careful with a log dilution, and that's a potential error with uh, your measurements here. In uh, doing these solutions, though, hopefully you get the, the experience of creating what's known as a standard curve. So the idea here is that if you have known values through a range, then you can plot this on a graph known as a standard curve, like this diagram here. And the idea being, if you have some sort of measurement for whatever you're trying to figure out uh, between two points of a measurement, for example, if you have 0.2 and 0.3, but you want to figure out what the, the quantity or what the concentration of something is, is 0.25, by looking at your standard curve, you should be able to work that out on a graph. And that's just very useful for when we're plotting these things and looking at different concentrations. Also, when we're working with solutions, something you may come across as something called a buffer. Uh, this is something that was actually mentioned in higher when we looked at growing microorganisms in the fermenter. So if you're not aware, a buffer is a solution that allows the pH in a reaction to be kept constant. It means that if you add some acid or if you add some alkali, it's not going to have much of an effect on that pH. And again, that's something depending on what solution, depending on what uh, reaction you're looking for, you may want to keep your pH in a constant uh, concentration. Finally, what we're going to talk about here is something called a colorimeter, um, which you hopefully get experience with also. The idea is quite straightforward. You have a small vial of a liquid uh, called a cuvette. Uh, the cuvette then goes into the colorimeter machine and essentially the light passes through that cuvette and the output detects uh, essentially how much light passes through your mixture. You have to be really careful that you don't get a fingerprint on the clear bit of glass that's going through the machine because that's going to cause issues with your measurements. But essentially, um, it look at how much light goes through that mixture and through that you can then quantify the concentration inside that mixture, but also something called its turbidity, which effectively is cloudiness. That might be really useful for like cells in a suspension and such. So they're a fairly straightforward machine. Uh, I've got an image of one just here, for example. 
One thing that you do need to be aware of though is you do need to calibrate these. You can't just put in your sample of whatever you're looking at and get an accurate reading. You need to first of all provide a baseline reading by adding a blank sample of liquid in. So essentially you have a blank sample where light should pass through there with absolutely no issue. The colorimeter then uses that as a baseline and then when you use whatever solution you're looking at, uh, it's then going to give you an accurate measurement of how much light is passing through that. Basic, when we pass through the light, we can use different filters, but whenever you go and put your sample solution into a colorimeter, the light is, um, so the readings go picked up how much light has been absorbed, but also how much light has been transmitted by that sample as well. And by doing that, we can figure out a couple of different things. So the absorbance of the solution can be used to determine that concentration of a solution, depending on what filter you use. So it can be useful to figure out the concentration of whatever you're looking for. And the transmission itself, the percentage of that can be used to determine, sorry, that turbidity we talked about, that cloudiness. So essentially, the, the higher the transmission that goes through, the less cloudy, the less turbid your solution is. And that can be useful when analyzing, like I said, things like cells that are uh, inside a solution such as that. When you get hands on with them, they're simple to use, you'll be able to figure out how this all works. But just be careful with your uh, calibration with a blank sample. And that's all for part B, looking at liquids and solutions. Uh, the main thing here is a bit more practical. Get used to using solutions, making dilutions, even simple things like using um, syringes and measuring cylinders and all that sort of stuff you need to be pretty comfortable with, especially for your practical work. I'll see you in the next video where we look at separation techniques in the lab. Bye for now.